Hi, this is Tara from Boys and Girls Clubs of Western Pennsylvania. Miss Tara, I am going to do a um, tutorial on how to use air dry clay, which is a super fun thing, um, just to make a simple bird form. Okay, we're going to make, I, we watch birds in our house. So we have 22 types of birds that come to our feeder area and they're all very, very beautiful. So we're really wanting to make like little tiny bird sculptures. So I thought I'd share with you how to do that. This is just some old um, divided up air dry clay that you can buy at the store. Um, Crayola makes it, a whole bunch of different people make it. This is the kind of clay that you cannot bake in the oven or the kiln. So it's just sometimes it smells a little funny. I don't know what chemical they put in, in it to make it uh, stay moist, but it's not like um, Play-Doh either or Sculpey clay. So this, this series that we're going to be doing is called Children's Imaginarium Visual Arts Series. I'm sorry. Children's Imaginarium um, Visual Arts and then it's going to be a sculpture series. So we're, we might be exploring clay, paper, um, wire, armatures, different types of clay bodies. So there's about six um, things that uh, are three dimensional for the most part. So that, that's what we're going to start with. Um, so I have this image in my mind of this bird that I want to make. And I'm going to draw it really quickly so you can see it. Um, it is called a wren. And when I look at anything that's alive, whether it's a person, an animal, a thing, um, I break it down into shapes. So a wren has like a cup body. So this is the body of a wren, basically. This is the tummy of the wren. Can you see that? Here's where, here's where it comes in. Then there's like a little tiny head, a circle right here. A little beak, skinny beak, a little pointy beak. The rest of the wren body straight across. And it has some tail feathers that stick out. And it has some side feathers that sort of on the side here, his wing feathers. Little eye and little tiny legs. This is what a wren basically looks like to me. You know how they move? they like hop. So they like fly, of course, but when they land, they hop. So you, you'll notice if you ever watch birds, they do different movements and it's pretty funny. The wren is a hopper. The same as a robin, a robin is a hopper. So this is, we call it Kylo Ren from the Star Wars movies, um, so in case any of you like Star Wars. So this is W-R-E-N, Ren. He's made of a half circle and a circle and a triangle. Easy peasy. So here's what we do. I'm gonna work right on top of my wren. I'm gonna flip him over. I have my piece of clay here. I'm gonna keep it all in one form. This is called blocking out. So I'm just gonna concentrate on that body. We're gonna start with the head and the beak. I always start on one end of the sculpture and move to the other. That's just my style. I just pinch out like what looks like the head. Okay, now I'm going to pinch out what looks like the body. A wren is sort of a flat half half shaped circle. And it's kind of like um it's kind of like round. If you were to look down on a wren, he's kind of like roundish too. So I might not, I might have taken a little bit too little bit of clay. So I'm gonna take some of the head down and make it smaller. See, all I'm using is my fingertips right now. Not a big deal. Now, the beauty of this is with air dry clay, even with air dry clay, you can keep this wrapped up. This, this bag of clay is probably a year old and it's still moist. So you can keep this wrapped up and keep working on Mr. Wren. Okay, so now, so his head is still pretty big for his body because Wren doesn't have a big head. He just has a little tiny head and more of a flat body. So this is the body, the back of the wren. 
And then here's his tail feathers warming up. Just give him a little squeeze here. Because he's got these little tiny tail feathers that come up. Okay. No, this is by no means perfected yet. This is just roughing it out. Flattening them out a little bit on the top. And then on the bottom, I'm just trying to get that nice little crescent half moon. Look at that. Beautiful. Would you say this looked like a, a Ren, Mr. Sir, cameraman? Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren. This is yeah. Kylo Ren. Okay, this is Kylo Ren. And he has these two little feet right here. And I don't have little toothpicks. I was looking for little toothpicks earlier. I don't have them in my drawer for some reason. I might have borrowed them for another class. Don't worry. So what I do with air dry clay is later I use wire. And I make like little wire feet. So like you can use the plant wire. Oh, thank you. Patrick's busting up. Oh, nice. He's busting up a fork for me. You can use these two if you want. That's all right. This will okay. be perfect just to get the idea across. Okay, there's little Ren's feet. I'm really jamming them up into the body because his feet aren't really that big. Okay, so there's little Ren feet. Okay, so now... Now I'm, it's mixed media. Yeah, it's mixed media. That means you use a couple of different types of materials. Now, one of the things that um, allows clay to be operational to be controlled by our hands and tools is that in the clay body is water so that's why when we dry the clay it becomes hard the water leaves the clay it doesn't matter what kind of clay it is there's always water in there okay it could be modeling clay which is supposed to stay um, soft forever and it mostly does and it has oil in it but water but modeling clay even has water in it Okay, so it's all about the flow of water. If you want to smooth something out, all young people will say, give me a bowl of water. I need to work this with water. You can, okay? You can use your fingertips or you can use a little, a little sponge, but you can only use a little bit of water, okay? You don't want to get, go crazy with the water or your, the clay will start to break down and it'll just become mud literally in your hand and then you won't even have any clay left. So I can smooth this guy out and I can put patterns on his wings now. And I wanted to point out a couple different tools I use. I'm a ceramicist. I am a potter. Okay, so I throw on the wheel and I hand build. This is a needle tool that's really good for doing like really fine detailed work. If I want to make just a small eye, I can use the needle tool just like so and just make a little, a little indentation or a mark. I can take the needle tool like this and I could make the flat, I could use it flat like this. This is by pushing, this is called a push, push maneuver, push pull maneuver, when you actually take a tool and push it in and pull it through, okay? Um, I have these kinds of tools, which are subtractive tools. These are called loop tools. So this is this one. I have several different kinds of loop tools for carving. Instead of pushing the clay back into itself, and displacing um, clay, you can use a loop tool and you can make a, you can just pull it, drag it, it's a little tiny wire, and you can just drag it through the body of the clay and this becomes subtractive sculpture when you do that. Can you do that one more time so I can Sure, let's side. do it on this side. Okay. So I can take this mm -hmm. loop tool and I can just go like this and take away clay. Nice. And that's called subtractive sculpture because we're taking away clay. And we never waste our clay. We keep our little bits of clay in a nice little ball and then we put it back in with the other clay. So I often use other tools. This is called a fettling knife, okay? What kind of knife? Fettling knife, I think it's called. It's um, made by, the, that was the person's name, I believe, that made that made this knife. It's a dull knife. It's not super sharp. And it's really good for clay. Don't do that with a sharp knife. Yeah, don't do this with a sharp knife. It's just very dull. But it's very nice to use with clay. You can scrape, you can poke, you can cut. cut. It's a very nice little clay knife. And then I use things like dowel rods. Dowel rod, rods are nice because you can take and make like a, you know, an indentation. 
if I wanted to make an indentation, you know, um, for like a different kind of eyeball or whatever, I can do that. Oh, here's an example how you use a feathering knife. If you wanted to open up the beak, you could go like this. Slice in, then you can open up the beak just by making a little slice. You see? Anyways, there's some very basic clay maneuvers for you. Um, I think that I will work on this next time, make it very polished for you, and then we'll show you how to paint it properly. Okay, thank you very much for that tutorial. All right. Done? Done. <laughs>